welcomed changes are coming to Genshin Impact finally. And to me, I gotta ask, is it a little too late? I don't know, but we're gonna read through them today because I'm hearing a lot of great stuff from this and I've read a little bit and my God, they're fixing some stuff that actually needs to be fixed. Again, better late than never or a little too late. We're gonna find out today. But before we get into that, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified of when the next Genshin Impact video comes out. And of course, don't forget to check out Gamer Subs. Use code Tystra for 10% off. That's right. Code Tystra will get you gluten-free, keto-friendly energy. Good for your soul. And good for your soul is also the stuff that's going on with Genshin. It's good for your soul because, again, it's stuff that should have been done a long time ago, right? Stuff that should have been done a long time ago, okay? But... We don't always get that. So let's go ahead and dive into the newest developer notes. I can already tell you this world level nine stuff, gonna be insane. Now, in the new version, travelers who have reached adventurer rank 58 can choose to upgrade to world level nine. Now for people, you might think, oh, this means that we're going to be, you know, going up to level 100. There was a big rumor going around for Genshin Impact that we were going up to level 100. Not the case it looks like because if you look right here, and normally it'll tell you like there's gonna be some ascension stuff going on, but or maybe I could be wrong. Um, but from what I'm seeing here, it doesn't look like we're going up to level 100 because they don't even talk about that, right? So when the world levels increase to nine, the levels of normal opponents, elite opponents, and bosses such as the Electro Hypostasis, Pyro Regisvide, bosses like that in the open world will be increased by about 10, making the battles more challenging. So that means bosses will be level 100. Doesn't mean that we will be level 100, but they will be level 100. Of course, the rewards for defeating opponents in the open world will also be more generous. For example, defeating a world level 9 boss will guarantee you at least three character level up materials. <laughs> Bravo! That's great. Um, I mean, it makes the grinding a little bit easier because for people who are like me in world level 8 and trying to increase a character from level 1 to level 90, it is a little bit difficult when you get two materials however i think that that should have been upgraded to five because i think that's just fair like i don't want to grind bosses that much and you don't give us a lot of resin response time so it's like at least give me less time on the bosses you know but i'll take this because you at least get the three maybe you get four i don't know it doesn't say Plus, starting from version 5.0, the basic drop rates for the following opponents will be optimized to increase the efficiency of obtaining corresponding materials. That includes Spectres, which we're having a rough time on getting some of the good materials. Same with Nobushi and, of course, the Kairage. But Abyss Mages, Rune Guards, Rune Hunters, and Rune Graders will also have increased drop rates, which is dope. With the increase of the world level, the drop rates for materials also increase along with the drops from specific monsters. Wow, obtaining enhancement materials will be much more efficient. I wouldn't say much more, but it is more efficient, right? This is this is a good thing. I don't want anybody to think that my skepticism is meaning it's going to be bad. I think this is a welcome change. It absolutely needed to happen. However, I think that giving us only three boss materials from, you know, beating a boss is kind of meh. You know it is whatever but i'll still take it right this one i'm actually kind of shocked about regional specialty tracking function and increased total map pins limit first things first uh to help regional specialty or to help you find regional specialties more quickly uh after the version 5.0 update you will be able to pinpoint the location range of the regional specialties on the map which they do show us a little bit of a demonstration here. Kind of see, and boom, little circle right there. It's just like when you're fighting bosses or finding uh, enemies, right? Now, for me, I am kind of a little concerned because now your like characters that are like regional specialty finders might not be as useful, in my opinion, because you have this regional tracker. Uh, at the same time, the number of specialties in the area have uh, that have yet to be uh, collected will be displayed. So if you have multiple, you have multiple, right? After collecting all the specialties in the current area, the blue circles will automatically 
recommend new locations for the corresponding regional specialties, right? So moreover, uh, starting in version 5.0, total map limit will be increased to 50 for the pins. So pins, I didn't really care, but I think that this is a good uh, little addition with the regional uh, item finding. But at the same time, I do feel that it kind of takes away from the regional specialty finders hopefully they kind of add a little note that's like you have to have a regional finder only because of the fact that i want a gatekeep <laughs> I, I kid but ultimately i hope that they find like like there's got to be some sort of like described reason for this you know are they going to change those other uh, helpers that would help you find those specialties? Are they going to change them to have different abilities, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, hopefully they don't just go the easy route and go uh, character ascension and all that stuff. But I digress. That's just me. Uh, new update to crafting benches, mystic offering. We are getting new mystic offering artifacts. We already knew this, but these are the ones that we're getting. Deep wood memories, gilded dreams, desert pavilion chronicle, Flower of Paradise Lost, Nif's Dream, uh, Varukasha's Glow, Marachose Hunter, and Golden Trope. These last two are the big ones for me, in my personal opinion, because these are the two best sets. Bar none, in my opinion. They work on so many characters universally, so having this in the Artifact Strongbox is perfect. And I already have a video ready for this. I'm going to be strongboxing like a thousand plus artifacts to get these so that's just me uh gilded dreams is another good set especially for uh dendro users and we are getting kanich so hopefully gilded dreams is a very good set for him i don't know just yet uh serena teapot load and increased furnishing inventory limit after continuous performance op optimization of the uh, serena teapot load by the developers the load limit will be increased to 1.6 times the previous limit in the version 5.0 update allowing for more furnishings to be placed in the teapot which goes from 2000 to 2200 they should just increase it to unlimited i don't understand why we're doing these small increases it should just be unlimited that's just what i'm saying why limit our negativity like that how dare you um but i still think it's good that we're getting an increase right still very good for people who do love the serena teapot i know that there's one of my friends uh that is super into serena teapot so uh, food usage and cooking system optimizations. Uh, in the new version, special dishes will now have a usage prompt before use. Using special dishes in the inventory, adding special dishes to NRE, and using special dis dishes in the revive characters. Now, so we have that. I think that's okay. I never knew that this was a problem, but hey, it is what it is. For those who had that problem, you now don't have that problem. Congrats. What's more, when reviving characters, lower ranked food items will be prioritized to avoid an accidental use of rare dishes. Again, never knew that was an issue. Not a big problem for me, but to those who were, had that problem, pretty bug. Uh, food interface in the inventory and the cooking system interface will now have a new filter and search functions to make them easier to use. Cool. I don't really use food. <laughs> like, am I the only one that doesn't really use food? So... Uh, so we're going to just skip that. Now, this one actually is good because I don't know why we just didn't implement this in the first place. Uh, certain interface uh, operation and display optimizations. In version 5.0, the developers have optimized some commonly used interfaces to facilitate a smooth and convenient uh, operation experience. Condensed resin crafting interface. It will display the current number of condensed resin you have and automatically select the maximum amount you can craft without exceeding the limit. Bravo. Now make it to where we gain resin a lot faster, <laughs> but I still think that's a really good one. Like for me personally, I use a lot of condensed resin because I get, I do a lot of grinding, right? I still play Genshin. I just don't summon for every character now. Um, but I do think that this is a welcome change. <sighs> hey. A little bit tired recording this a little bit late. I just got out of work. Weapon enhancement interface, the preview of excess EXP converted will be displayed in the enhancement uh, interface directly, simplifying weapon enhancement operations. So if we look at this, right, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in. Let's zoom in. If I could actually zoom in. So if you see, like, it actually shows you the returning overflow right at that small uh, thing at the, bo at the bottom. So that's cool. I think that's dope. Uh, forging interface. The forging operation will automatically select the maximum quantity you can currently forge. 
Okay. Just saves me like two seconds, right? I'll take that. Uh, personal, <laughs> personal profile display page optimization. In the new version, the personal profile display page will add a display of the number of characters at max friendship level, the number of stars obtained from floor 9 to floor 12 to of Spiral Abyss, and increase the number of display limit for the character showcase and name card showcase. Wow, that's, uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, being able to show off more than just eight characters is dope and more name cards. Um, I do like the friendship level stuff because it really gets you to show off, uh, just how, like, terribly, chronically on Genshin Impact you are. And trust me, I'm saying this from experience on working on friendship levels. I have, I think, 65 plus characters at friendship level 10. I think the only one I don't have at friendship, or no. All my all my current characters, well, except for Emily. I did summon for Emily, which that video will be coming out soon. So that's cool. I'd like that. Long quest prompt function. The developers noticed that during the adventure, there are sub quests with long durations and high difficulty. If you enter without warning, you may experience forced teleportation, in uh, interrupted processes, and restarts. Therefore, the developers have created the long quest prompt function so that you could plan your adventures accordingly. For quests with long storyline durations, the long quest prompt function will trigger a reminder to help you arrange your time reasonably. Uh, for quests with difficult combat scenarios, the long quest prompt function will provide recommendations for required elements, weapon types, etc. based on the different combat scenarios, helping you to enter battles with a suitable party composition. So it's like, hey, before you enter here, uh, you're going to get messed up if you don't have this, right? trying to dude i hate this right i can't okay we're just gonna say muff it right you know we see it right there offer the talisman to begin the ancient trial the next part of the story is more uh continuous uh or contiguous i guess is what the, uh, if that word's correct i'm dumb don't mind me uh, in addition to the uh, aforementioned optimizations for version 5.0, the reduce to reduce the long-term game burden on you and optimize resource output, starting from version 5.0, we plan to adjust the acceptance criteria for weekly reputation quests and make adjustments to corresponding battle pass missions. When the reputation level of a certain region reaches the maximum, the weekly reputation quests for that region will no longer be available. We will remove the weekly reputation quests from battle pass weekly missions uh, complete three requests, complete three batteries. Now, to me, this wasn't that big a deal. I could literally get all of that done in 10 minutes. It's not, I, I don't understand why they're saying we don't want people on their, on the game for that long. Like with that, it's, yeah, it sucks because it's like, oh, it's tedious. I have to do this once a week, but it takes 10 minutes. So I'm hoping that they fix it in some way, which I think is going to be with this. Starting from version 5.0, the Battle Pass missions will be adjusted as follows. In Battle Pass to this Battle Pass period, a new quest series will accumulate or with for accumulated enhancement of five star artifacts will be added. Completing the quest series will grant you a total of 3,600 Battle Pass XP, Primo Gem 60, and sac uh, sac Sanctifying Unction or Unction times 60 per period. I think that's actually kind of cool. Now, it sucks because we're losing weekly experience. So if you look at a battle pass, a battle pass usually lasts for about like five weeks. So, and those were about, I think, 600. So, well, I mean, we're getting more out of that. So 3,600 battle pass, technically, we're getting more out of it. So I think that, yeah, I, I guess I could take that. I don't mind that. I think that's cool. And enhancing uh, five-star artifacts is really easy because each one is like 12 levels. So you just got to enhance like, you know, freaking three level five artifacts. It's not a big deal. So I guess that's cool. Uh, battle pass daily missions, the battle pass XP for completing daily uh, commission rewards four times will be increased from 150 to 200. Dope. I dig it. For the above adjustments, the developers will issue 1 million Mora in one go. Please see, wow, okay. So I already have like 160 million Mora. So that's that's a big old nothing burger to me. Uh, give me actual Primo gems. And that concludes uh, the stuff for the 5.0. I think that these are a lot of welcome changes. Um, I do have my reserves in, in regards to some of these, right? Like, again, I don't know why we're increasing the world level, but also barely increasing the amount of rewards we get for the more challenge, right? Granted, I beat these bosses 
relatively easy. It's not like it's that hard. But for people who just get to world level 9, this could be a struggle bus for them. And I feel like that's, you know, only three level of materials. If it goes up to four, then great. That'd be fantastic. I, I hope that it does go up to four. It says at least three. So I would hope that it goes up to four, maybe even crazy amounts of five, hopefully. However, I don't think it's going to be five. I think it's going to be maybe four. But at the same time, when I see at least three, I'm like, okay, I'm only going to get three. That's how I feel. Uh, basic drop increases are really good for these uh, smaller enemies. I know that uh, the Nobushi have always been like difficult to deal with same with the specters right uh being able to locate these uh regional map stuff pretty cool i think uh we got to find a reason to have or find a new uh ability for those ones that are finding regional specialties right uh mystic offering is always a great thing to have in my personal opinion uh serena teapot stuff is okay food usage stuff is kind of a nothing burger i don't I don't see a lot of people using food unless they're really trying to min max the amount of damage to like show off to everybody which wow you did like 10 million damage with a bennett cool good job man i couldn't do it i don't care <laughs> that's just personally for me cadets resin this is kind of a small update that's needed uh these both are kind of whatever to me profile pages i think more customization is always great and then long-term quest stuff alongside uh battle pass optimization so I don't know. I think that 5.0's optimizations look really, really good. These dev notes are really, really nice, right? I think that this was a good one, and it covered a lot of stuff that I think need to be covered. But a lot of stuff still feels semi-ambiguous. Maybe I'm just not reading between the lines here, but I don't know. What do you think in the comments down below? Let me know. I definitely want to hear y'all's opinion. Anyways, y'all, that's going to be it for today. Love y'all to death, and we will see you in the next episode of uh, this video series. <laughs> like, episode. We'll see you in the next video. Please take care and be safe.